Hi, welcome to Gramster. Recently I got this Autofox M1 backup camera kit and I'll be installing this on my Honda Accord. One of my earlier videos showed the installation of this VR3 backup camera. I made this video about eight years ago and just show the quality of the camera, the old one. Let's put the car in reverse and we can barely see my bag over there. The field of view for these cameras back then was probably like I don't know, 70 degrees maybe at most. It was definitely not HD. With these, this has a 165 degree field of view and a 4.3 inch display screen. So right away, that's a huge improvement versus my old one. Also with the older one, I think I, back then I paid about $80 from AutoZone with a rebate. And this one, well, this cost me about $50 off Amazon. Here's all the items that came in the box. And starting from the right, this is the windshield suction mount. And this part over here, this can rotate 360, so I can angle the display screen how I want. And here's that 4.3 inch display screen. On the back, we have three operational buttons. And here's the power connector. Over here, we have two T-clips and four zip ties. The clips, well, this is to tap into the power for the reverse lights. That way, whenever I'm trying to back up the vehicle, that's when it'll power the camera and the display. And here is the actual camera. This camera is a lot smaller than my previous camera. We've got adhesives on both this side and this side. The reason is because this sits between my vehicle and the license plate. Here's the power. This is the part that will connect to the T-clips, which will be then connected to the reverse lights. I also came with this little manual. If you want to read any part of this in more detail, just feel free to pause the video. And this is what I meant earlier about how you need to first take off the license plate, stick on the reverse camera, then place the license plate back on. Here's some more instructions, mounting suggestions, instructions. For, here's a product specs for it too. And here's a camera specs for it. Here's the tools I'll recommend. Flat screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, wire cutters, and a flashlight. Now for some vehicles, you may be able to access the reverse lights a lot easier. But for my Honda Accord, I at least need these three. First, I need to move my license plate and my old backup camera. I can use a Phillips screwdriver for both of them, but the top ones are more rusted. And these, I can also use the flat screwdriver. The bottom ones, I cannot. So for a top one, I'm going to use the flat one, just so I don't strip the bolt over there. Now I need to remove the liner on the top of the trunk. The reason I need to do this is because I want to access this cavity over here and run the wire through here. And for this, I need a flat screwdriver. Because for my vehicle, I have these these uh, like these plastic clips, and to loosen these clips, just unscrew this piece over here with a flat screwdriver to a point where I can just pull it out down here and do it gently. You don't want to break this part, these little clips over here. There's another one over here, but this one there's nothing to unscrew, so I'll just pull it downward. So here's what it looks like. These two were set, and this was the other one. Now I need to do it for here too. Of course, the more you move, the easier it is to work with, but it also means that the more you move, the more you need to put back. So I need to access this cavity, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the wire down this side, down here, and to here. Here's my brake light. Here I also need to use the flat screwdriver to loosen all this. Of course, if I were to do this with two hands, it would be a lot easier. I got one here. And I have another one over here. Let's do 
the rest by hand. So it's one, two, let's see if I have any more. Nope, no more. I'm replacing my backup camera, so this part was already exposed. But if this was your first time, it would look something like this. Just take a flat screwdriver, unscrew this to access the cavity. Now, this one needs to be sticked onto my vehicle and the license plate. So what I'm gonna do is just first clean this area, just so that it would adhere better. And also the back of my license plate. Here's the old backup camera. You can see a lot of dust has gathered behind the lens cover over the years. And, well, just look at the size of it. The new backup camera is right over here. I'm gonna leave this cover on until the very end. And if I go about a foot and a half in, I come to this little control unit. For this control unit, I can choose between having the grid lines or normal. The grid lines are for parking. For example, I'll see the two lines that tell me if I'm if I can fit in a certain spot, you know, it's also color coded, so I can tell if I'm about five feet away down to one feet away. Also, another thing is the previous backup camera. I had to splice the wire in order to fit through that little hole I showed above my license plate. With this new backup camera, the camera in this little control dongle over here, this separates. Just pull this. So this is quite useful because let me show this here. I can then just take this, insert it in here. I don't need to splice any sort of wire like I did in the past. I still haven't removed the adhesive cover because I want to first measure, basically get an idea of how it is going to be. So I'm going to first run the wire through here, get into the, the uh, cavity of the trunk, and just place the camera in a spot where I think it will be optimal. Place my license plate up here and see if I can still adjust this piece up here. With the license plate cover, this plastic, this one that says Autosport cover up here, I have a hard time angling the camera down. Without the license plate cover, I have a lot more wiggle room to adjust this camera. But for now, I'm going to leave the cover on, use it for a bit, see how it goes. Now I have an idea on where to stick it onto, adhere to. So now it's time for me to remove this this 3M adhesive plastic cover piece. Before I move the front adhesive cover, just going to measure it one more time. Okay. Alright. So now I'm going to remove this front adhesive cover. Now it's time to screw on my license plate. Camera's all screwed in. I ran the wire through here, and that wire came out over here. I just need to reinsert it back into this dongle over here. And to save on some zip ties, rather than just running the cable directly here, I'm gonna run it through the cavities here, the frame of the trunk. make it a little bit neater. Now I'm gonna plug it back into here. I'll need two hands for this. There's only one way to insert it. Just be careful. It's all plugged in and before I zip tie it to the cable and run the cable down here, I'm just do a little mock run just so I can get a sense of the length I'll need. So this is the cable that will be going to the reverse lights. This is the one that will be going to the front of the vehicle. For the reverse lights, it goes down here then I'll be hiding it inside this cavity. I use three of the four zip ties. One, two, and three. 
And what we do next is just cut off the excess over here. So just make it neater. Now it's time to access the reverse lights. For my vehicle, this one right over here. Follow it back into the trunk area. Pull the liner back. This part is a little bit dim, but following back, I know it's this piece, this light over here. Just using this one as, as an example, it's basically the same type of design for reverse lights. Grab onto it and turn it counterclockwise. So I'm gonna use my left hand, reach in here, turn it counterclockwise, it'll clip. Now let's pull it out. For my previous backup camera, I already tapped the power. So I'm gonna leave this alone, but I'll still demonstrate how to tap it for this new AudioVox M1 camera. And that's this wire over here. Now it's time to connect the power to the reverse camera. And here's the power cord from the backup camera I ran. There's always gonna be a black. For your car, there might be a green, but either case, there's always gonna be a black. And for the backup camera, there's always gonna be a black too. So I'm, it'll be black to black, the other color to the other color. And I'm gonna connect the same color cords using the provided wire taps. The way this works is for each of the polarity, the black and the black, they go in here, like so. And when this metal piece clamps down, it essentially pierces the insulation, the rubber insulation on wires, connecting them. So black and black, like this. Now I'm gonna close it. Close it all the way. And my camera's probably not able to pick it up, but on the inside I can see that it's pierced the insulation. Now I just need to do it for the red wires too. This is so much easier than what we used to do in the past. We still need to like basically slice it, then run a wire, tie it up, use like insulation tape. Alright, like this. Here. And now I'm going to close this to close the loop. I'm going to clip it all the way. There. If your hands aren't strong enough to close this manually, take a tool, like one of the pliers for example, and just press it down, squeeze it in. There. Before placing liner back, test it first. What I did was I engaged the emergency brake. I set the car to reverse, so the reverse light is currently on. And I just want to see that this gets powered on. What I'm going to do is walk towards the back of my vehicle. Now you see how the lines are pretty handy. The red lines to indicate certain distance. If I'm at the red, it looks like I'm about a foot or so from this camera right over here. Then there's the yellow, then there's the green. Now it's time to run this cable to the front of the vehicle to power the monitor, also transmit the video. For my vehicle to bring down the back seat, I just pull on this lever over here. And I'm gonna run the cord along this liner to the back seat. It'll look different for every vehicle model, but essentially what I'm trying to do is just tuck in the cord, hide it from sight. And once I reach over here, I'm gonna tuck it in here, run along the back seat over here. That way I can run back down down there and down to the driver's side of the vehicle. Now I can either run the cable under the floor mat or under this piece over here. Go under the floor mat. If I ever take the floor mat off to clean, someone might kick the cable, so I don't want that. I'm gonna go under here. To go under here, you might need a flat screwdriver if your hands aren't thin enough to just pry this up. This is just clipped on. There's no nothing to unscrew or anything. I'm just essentially grab like this piece over here and just pull upward, and you hear a clip. Now I can just run it through here. So for this side, I'm gonna push it downward, and here with my finger. Now it's down here. Once it's in here, I'm gonna cut over to the next one. And I'll need two hands for this one, because I'm gonna use the flat screwdriver to basically, like this, pry up a little bit, just so I can tuck the cable in there right now by the driver's side. And I took off the floor mat just so I can show this piece better. I can run the cord under here, 
I'll need a screwdriver for, the, for that. This part's pretty tight. And then run it up through the side over here and just place the monitor. That way there's, the core is not really in the way of anything. Another method is to run the cord up the center console. Right now I have about five feet of core length. So that's enough for me to run the cable to the center up over here, up over here, now like this. Of course, this means that the, the cable will, will be visible. Connecting the video monitor to the windshield mount is very simple. On the back over here, there's only one way to slide it in from the bottom up. I'm gonna do is slide it in from the bottom, push upward, here it'll click. And here's the ball joint. I'm just gonna tighten in gently, not tighten in fully yet, because now I can place it up here if I want to. Like I mentioned before, there's way there's enough slack for me to place it over here too. For now I placed it here. I can always remove it. It's a windshield suction mount so it's easily moved. Here was my old one. Let's move this aside so I have one less cord thing going over here. Now let's put my car in reverse. Came up. Right away I can see that this is so much brighter than the previous backup monitor. And I showed that there are three buttons on the back over here. The middle button cycles through the menu system. I'm gonna press it here. Now I can adjust the brightness. Brightness, contrast, color, language, mode. For the mode is nine, is uh, 16 by nine or, let me get back to the mode. 16 by nine or four by three. I'm gonna do the widescreen. Now it's time to put this to a test. Put my car in reverse. With the green lights on both the, well, the bars on both the left and right side, I can see whether or not my vehicle will fit in the spot. This is great for like parallel parking, especially when I'm in the city. Then I interpret each of these as a, probably like a foot per segment. So I'm just backing up based on that right now. And having just reached the green, about to reach the red, uh, the yellow. And now I'm about to reach the red, and just reach the red spot. So for the red, well, let's take a look at the distance. It looks like I have about hmm, maybe three feet or so. So I interpreted each red segment as about a foot and a half. To sum it up, I like the quality of this Autovox M1 backup camera. The view angle is much wider than the one I had previously. This one's about 165 degrees. The display, a lot brighter. I can also change the brightness, the contrast. I saw a larger display too, 4.3 inches. Installation was very simple. From start to finish, it'll take anywhere from half an hour to an hour. I think most of the time will be spent on trying to make things look nice and neat, running the cable so it's not visible elsewhere. Right now this part's visible, but for the back to the front of the vehicle, that part's not visible. And this costs just $50. So yes, I like this item and I'll recommend it. Well, thanks for watching this review. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching Car Hamster. Bye.